Well folks, we're right back at it. It's time to install this 8th inch copper tubing and get this thing back together. But before we do, let's drill some holes in a perfectly good manifold. That's right, I'm currently drilling not one, but two holes in a perfectly good FP manifold. Here's the plan. I want to run an EGT gauge in one hole and get a back pressure reading from the other. All of this could be done from just drilling one hole and back pressure doesn't frequently alter itself unless you have a change in restriction or flow. So why the second hole? There is some debate on which cylinder is the best cylinder to run an EGT gauge on a 4G63. By drilling a hole in the cylinder runners 1 and 2 and obtaining two EGT gauges, I could solve the mystery for my setup. After drilling and tapping, there are some sharp surfaces that we need to clean up. The outside is easy, but to clean up the inside, it takes a little thought. I just fed a grinding stone up through the hole, then attached it to my Dremel to do the work. Remember those bolts we had problems with? Chasing the threads will ensure a seamless assembly. So what is an EGT gauge? It's a gauge that uses a probe to measure the temperature of the exhaust gas leaving whichever cylinder you place the probe in. An EGT gauge should not replace your wideband O2 sensor since many factors play a role in exhaust gas temperatures. One major factor is ignition timing because an overly retarded ignition timing at a safe AFR will give incredibly high EGTs. You want to avoid exceeding 1650 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything hotter and you risk damage to the piston, turbocharger, cylinder head, and O2 sensor. Of course, every engine is different. This anti-seize will make your next job so much easier. This heavy duty anti-seize by Loctite provides protection against corrosion and seizures of bolts and other metal parts such as the exhaust housing and is rated for 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. It is metal free so you can use it with all your metal parts regardless of their metal properties. I have had unmatched success with this product and while I normally avoid endorsing things on the channel this stuff has made my life so much easier. With that being said, all my exhaust parts and many other bolts will receive this anti-seize. The middle exhaust manifold stud hole needs to be sealed with some RTV because just behind the bolt lies an oil passage that will leak if not properly sealed. The RTV does not have to be high temp RTV since your head is water cooled, but I do recommend high temp RTV for peace of mind.
Since these holes were drilled for future use, we'll plug them for now. The part number MR187848 is for the factory conical washers that are used to secure the turbocharger assembly to the exhaust manifold. These washers are dimpled on one side and are constructed to be slightly concaved. When installing these washers, two should be used on each bolt with the dimples facing away from each other. This allows for two washers to act as a spring applying a preload once torqued to the correct value ensuring the turbo does not come loose. When installing the turbocharger, the wrench just barely doesn't fit the right front bolt due to the number one runner. Guess it's time for a special tool RB165301. It's not a difficult tool to make, we're just going to grind some of the meat off the box end of the wrench to give us a little more clearance. This is what you end up with, a slightly altered but still usable on any project wrench. Try to leave some meat so that the strength of the metal is not diminished to nothing. Anytime you have to use a wrench for a final torque, ensure that you calibrate your arm with a properly torqued bolt first. The oil inlet fitting on this hole set is equipped with an inverted flare and is sealed with an o-ring. That's great, but the CHRA gets pretty hot and the manifold is right above it. So anytime I am in this general area doing any work, I try to replace it for peace of mind. Now moving on to back pressure. This is the measurement of pressure inside the exhaust manifold after the head and before the turbine inlet at any given time. Each pound of boost created makes a ratio of back pressure before the turbo. For example, 30 psi boost and a 45 psi exhaust manifold pressure leaves you with a 1 to 1 1.5 ratio, meaning that for every pound of boost there's 1.5 pounds of back pressure. This number can be used to adequately size a turbo or tell you just how well the one you have is flowing. The closer you get to a 1 to 1 ratio for back pressure, the more power you will make per PSI, but the laggier the turbo will be. The higher the second number in the ratio gets relates to more heat and pressure being trapped in the exhaust manifold, making for faster spool in a responsive turbo. But keep this in mind, once you start trying to push too much through the exhaust section of a turbo, running too much boost for that turbo, you start making a huge ratio of back pressure, and it only gets higher the more boost you run. This not only limits the amount of power you can make, but makes EGTs go up, hinders the motor's ability to expel burnt gases, and makes the car more prone to detonation. I am using a whole set HX35 coupled to a .55 AR exhaust housing. What do you think my back pressure reading will be? Place your guess in the comments below and stay tuned. 